Hi and welcome to Bites and Bits. The big news from the Raspberry Pi Foundation is that the new Raspberry Pi version 5 is going to be released during October this year, 2023. Now this is the first major update to the flagship product since the Raspberry Pi version 4 was introduced in 2019. So let's have a look and see what we can expect from the new model. As with all new Raspberry Pi releases, the headline upgrade is more processing power. So the 1.8 GHz quad-core ARM Cortex-A72 processor of the Raspberry Pi 4 has been replaced with a new 2.4 GHz quad-core ARM Cortex-A76, giving the new board between two and three times more processing power than the previous unit. So this faster processor then is also teamed with faster DDR4 RAM, which will come in either a 4GB or 8GB of onboard memory, and depending of course on which model you choose. And this new board also has more powerful graphics using an 800 MHz Video Core 7 GPU that's connected to the main system on a chip via a PCI Express bus. Uh, and this does allow the Pi 5 to maintain support for OpenGL 3.1 and Vulkan 1.2. Now apart from these performance improvements, one of the main enhancements to the new board is the inclusion of a PCIe 2.0 interface, which has been brought out to a ribbon cable connector on the edge of the board. So this is going to allow you to connect a range of high-speed devices, such as NVMe SSE drives, um, although you're obviously going to need some sort of interface board that will allow you to connect the ribbon cable to your PCIe device. And I guess this is also going to open up the possibility of directly connecting external graphics cards uh, and such like to your Raspberry Pi, again, if, if, if that's the sort of thing that you're into. Other than that, the rest of the features are pretty similar to the Pi 4. Uh, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, HDMI, DSi uh, and the USB connectors all remain pretty much the same as before, uh, with, with maybe slightly better specifications. But the built-in headphone and composite video socket has been taken off, um, but I assume that there probably are some header pins on the board that will allow you to access these functions. Now one of the really good additions to the new board is a power management system together with a power button. And this power button will allow you to access both soft resets and hard resets without having to unplug the power cable coming into your board. Now if you do want to get hold of one of these, um, now is the time to jump onto any of the main retailers websites and place your um, pre-release order. As with any new Raspberry Pi launch, uh, these boards are likely to go out of stock almost immediately once they hit the shelves. So um, if you don't get in now, you'll probably have to wait quite a few weeks um, for some new stock to come back in. So the pricing I've seen online is £59 for the 4GB model and £79 for the 8GB model. And, and that will pretty much be exactly the same when you convert across to dollars. Now, on top of this price, you're going to need a new power supply. So the Raspberry Pi 5 can draw up to 5 amps. So your best bet is to get hold of one of the new 27 watt USB-C power bricks. And, and, and these are going to come in at around about £12 or, or $12. Now, with this increased current use, the board is going to generate more heat. So they are recommending that you do add some active cooling. Uh, and the brand new Raspberry 5 case um, actually has an inbuilt fan in it. Um, so for about £10, you'll get both the case and the cooling system. Now, of course, you can buy standalone fans and um, team these up with some passive cooling fins, um, but you're going to need some sort of other box that this will all fit into. And, and no doubt there will be a wide range of third party cases and cooling solutions coming out in the next few weeks. So all in, you're going to be looking at just under £100 or $100 to get yourself up and running with a brand new Raspberry Pi 5. So is, is it going to be worth the upgrade? Well, if you're the sort of person who likes to have the fastest Raspberry Pi around and you want to find out just how far you can push this board, then you've probably been waiting for this day for quite some time. 
retro gaming is going to be much improved. And if you're doing any processor intensive projects such as AI or image processing, then this extra power is going to be a real boon. Now, I have to admit, as soon as I saw the announcement for the Pi 5, I did immediately go on to my usual sort of Pi retailer's website and drop one of them into my shopping cart. But when I got to the checkout, I did really have to take a bit of a second thought and think, do I actually need this? So, so when these Raspberry Pis first came out and they were the sub £30 single board computers, and obviously this choice was a lot easier uh, and there wasn't so much choice around. But um, to be honest now, at this price point where we're looking at £60 for the base 4 gigabyte model, um, £80 for the 8 gigabyte model, and then realistically for me to get everything set up with the cooling and everything, we're looking at £100. Um, this does become more of a, a larger outlay and one which I would have to take a bit of a bigger decision on. Um, for my particular use case, um, I obviously have various sort of Raspberry Pi 3s and these sort of Raspberry Pi 4s um, sitting around on my desk um, just waiting for me to sort of do some projects with. So I would have to be honest with myself and say that I don't really need that extra computing power and, and £100 is, is more than I want to pay for just something to have a bit of a, an extra little bit to play with. So I've decided not to buy one of these, um, but again, that, that choice is entirely up to you. So um, that's my take on the Raspberry Pi 5, a, a great new addition to the Raspberry Pi range and, and a real good update um, if you need that at the moment. Um, of course, there are other options around and that's what I'll be exploring in a couple of my next videos. And one which is almost due to come out is, is my take on what, what I deem, as, well, at least for me, as my best value retro gaming computer. Um, and again, I'll release that video in the next couple of days. So if you want to catch up with that, do make sure you like um, and then subscribe to my channel uh, so I can keep up to date with all the latest releases. Um, lots of gaming, um, making and um, coding videos coming up. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I look forward to seeing you again in a video very soon. And bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video subscribe to my YouTube channel and visit my website.